Welcome, brave souls, to Fear File Chronicles, your one-way ticket to spine-chilling stories and terrifying tales. Tonight, we'll be diving into the darkest corners of the human mind with the story, the journal my grandfather left me. Part four, penned by the twisted mind of true God, 92. Together, we'll explore the unexplained and face our deepest fears. But before we begin, if you enjoy trembling in terror, be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your fellow fear fanatics, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell notification so you never miss an eerie episode. Your support truly means the world to us, so feel free to leave a comment below to join the Fear File Chronicles community. Now, without further ado, let's unravel the mysteries of the unknown together as we delve into tonight's fear-inducing story, the journal my grandfather left me. Part four, dim the lights and prepare yourself for a chilling journey into the Fear File Chronicles. I visited my grandmother today. I knew I had to ask her what she knew about grandpa's work. After catching up with how life has been since his passing, I took a deep breath and took her hand, saying, I have something I want to show you and ask you, and I hope I'm not overstepping by doing this. Pulling Grandpa's journal out, I say, What, if anything, do you know about this? With tears building in her eyes, she looked away, shaking her head. Not much, dear. Paul kept his work life as far away from me as possible. He did say, however, he knew it would cost him everything, but he would be able to provide so much to the rest of us and the world. Please know that this path you're following is a hard one with many temptations. As I stood up to leave, my grandmother reached out and placed a hand on my shoulder. Don't be too hard on yourself, she said softly. Your grandfather was a brilliant man, but he was also reckless. He never stopped to think about the consequences of his actions, and it cost him dearly. I nodded, taking in her words, grateful for her understanding. I'll be careful, I promised. I know you will, she said, giving my shoulder a gentle squeeze. You have his curiosity and his intelligence, but you also have something he never did. You have caution and self-awareness. Use those qualities to your advantage and you'll do great things. With that, she gave me a final smile before turning to leave the room. As I watched her go, I felt a sense of peace settle over me. I knew that I had a lot of work to do, and that there were still many dangers to face, but with my grandmother's support and guidance, I felt ready to take on whatever lay ahead. That night on my way home, I looked in my rearview mirror to see Lilith in my back seat. Slamming on the brakes, I pulled over as fast as I could. Putting the car into park, I looked into the back seat, only to see nothing. Turning back around, I pushed my head into the headrest, closing my eyes. Then, I felt it. A cold, wet sensation slowly ran up my neck onto the side of my face. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see the demon. It wasn't Lilith. It only took her form. Sitting there, I quietly say, If you're looking to form a contract, you'll have to find a better way to ask. But I will tell you out of good faith, Paul Astor is dead. With hearing that, the demon let out a horrible scream filled with genuine sorrow and fear. Then, in a plume of sulfuric smoke, it was gone. After a solid 20 minutes of catching my breath, I got back on the road home. I drove with caution. Every corner seemed to have a set of eyes watching me. The drive was long and exhausting, but I made it. Walking up to my apartment door, I saw a package poking out of my mailbox haphazardly. Grabbing it, I felt a chill run down my spine as if my body knew that what was inside should stay inside. Throwing caution to the wind, I took it up to my floor. Just before I could open my door, however, the package began to let out a sound. Putting it up to my ear, I could hear a beautiful melody coming from it. Walking through my door, I went straight to my study and placed the package on my desk. Pouring a circle of blessed salt around it, I took out my cell phone to call Blackwood. If anyone could help, it was him. Once he answered, I told him what I had found. 
in a kind and slow tone. He asked me to take a breath and to get some rest. He'd be over in the morning. Locking up my study, I made my way to bed. Sleep that night was mostly absent. What sleep I did get was filled with the screams of the demon from my car. The next morning, I woke up to knocking on my door. In a sleepy haze, I stumbled to answer it. Opening the door, I saw a tall, foreboding figure standing in the frame, jumping back, falling to the floor. I let out a yell, saying, No, please. I don't need or want a contract. With a small laugh, I heard a low, slow voice say, Fear not, Mr. Astor. I am here by your request. I can assure you, I don't mean you any harm at all. Now may I come in? With hearing that, I stood and responded in a small voice. Yes, please. Right this way. I then walked him to my study. As we approached the door, the ever-faint sound of the beautiful melody could be heard. A small smirk came across Blackwood's face. Opening the door for him, I pointed to my desk saying, It's right there, if you'd care to take a look. Turning his gaze to me, he told me to wake myself up, dress for the day, brew some tea, and he'll take a look at what I've stumbled upon. After a solid hour, I'd taken a shower, dressed and prepared what tea I had, not knowing exactly what he'd want. Walking out of the study to my dining room, he sat down, saying he was looking forward to the tea I had made for him. It certainly looks like you've stumbled upon something quite intriguing. It's not every day that a package begins to emit a mysterious melody. Before you proceed any further, it might be wise to take a moment to consider the potential risks and consequences of opening the package. The package itself doesn't bear any markings or labels that could suggest its contents or origins. Assuming you feel comfortable continuing, you could try carefully opening the package to investigate it further. You might want to have a pair of gloves or other protective gear on hand just in case there are any unexpected hazards inside. Once you've opened the package, we may be able to identify the source of the melody. Is there a device or instrument inside that could be producing the sound, or is the melody coming from some other source entirely? Depending on what you discover, you may want to explore the melody further, perhaps by recording it for study and or sharing it with others who might be able to help identify its origin. Or you may decide that it's best to dispose of the package and its contents altogether, especially if you have any concerns about its safety. Whatever you decide, I'll stand by your decision. With hearing this, I place my head into my hands, thinking about my grandpa and what he would possibly do. Taking in a deep breath, I stood up, grabbing a pair of gardening gloves and a face mask from the cabinet. I walked to the package and slowly pulled the paper covering open. Lifting the first flap, I noticed the temperature in the room drop immensely, letting out a labored breath. I pulled the paper farther away from what looked to be a small jewelry box. With my other hand, I grabbed the box, only to be shocked with the melody becoming unbearably loud. I could feel the blood begin to run from my ears as I pulled the box out. Once out, all went black. Waking up some time later, I could hear Blackwood humming to himself in my kitchen. Getting up, I slowly made my way to him. Seeing me up, he quickly came to my side and helped me to a chair. What the fuck happened? And where is the box at? I harshly blurted out. Well, as for what happened, you opened the package, finding the jewelry box? Once you placed it on your desk, you looked to me and smiled. Then your eyes went black and you started speaking in tongues that even I didn't understand. Then you collapsed to the floor. I waited patiently for a few minutes for you to stir, but once I felt you were out for the count, I picked you up and placed you on your couch. I did examine the box and the markings seemed to translate to, She who sings does so to tempt. Know that all she wants is to feed. I don't know what kind of demon is maybe locked away in the box but I can tell you won't be locked away for long, seeing what it's already done to you. Hearing all this, I let out an obnoxious laugh, shaking my head. What the hell did I get myself into? With concern on his face, Blackwood placed a hand on my shoulder, saying, Maybe we should head to my office. Perhaps I have something there that could help us? So now I'm in a cab with Blackwood, riding in a still silence. I'll update more when I can. Well, my friends, we've reached the end of tonight's chilling tale. 
The Journal My Grandfather Left Me, Part 4, by the talented True God, 92. I hope you've enjoyed our descent into darkness and that you'll carry a piece of the Fear File Chronicles with you as you drift into uneasy dreams. If our story left you shivering and shaking, don't forget to like this video, share it with others who crave a good scare, and subscribe to the Fear File Chronicles for more haunting horrors. Remember to hit the bell notification so you're always among the first to know when a new nightmare awaits. As always, we appreciate your support and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Sharing your fears and frights with us truly means a lot, so don't be shy to engage with our sinister community. Until next time, remember to embrace the darkness, for it is within the shadows that our most terrifying stories are born. Good night, and stay scared.